and welcome to Cracking the Cryptic. Today, um, a special video, we've been asked to talk about anagrams and how to solve them. So what I'm going to do is have a look at the uh, clues from yesterday's Daily Telegraph crossword, which featured anagrams. And we're going to try and solve them, um, first of all, without definitions, because the first thing about anagrams is that um, you, you have the letters to be rearranged and they have to make, in crosswords, a word. Now, the, the tips I can give you today, they might help for crosswords um, and they might help for, say, the countdown conundrum um, or for word puzzles in which you know that there's an answer that uses the letters required, the letters you've given. Um, if you're just trying to make the longest word possible out of a certain set of letters, these might not be so useful because I'm going to give you tips on when you know that you have all the letters. And that's one of the most important things. Now, funnily enough, in the six clues in the telegraph um, that featured anagrams, five of them needed either the addition or subtraction of one or two letters to get the right number of letters for the anagram. Um, so some of this is going to be about making sure you have the right word, the right letters, and that's partly about understanding the wordplay. Um, so let's, however, start with nine across, which is the first one and happens to be the one which gives you all the letters straight away. So first of all, we spot the anagram indicator here, which is could be. And then the other letters are so naive, and that's seven letters, and we need a seven-letter answer. As I say, I've concealed the definition, so that's not guiding us. And that's, well, it's an interesting thing. A crossword clue doesn't exist out of context. You get a definition, and you can use that to let your mind guide its decision about how the letters should be formed. Now, what a lot of people do, and what I certainly used to do when I began, is to kind of write the letters down in a, in a random order in a circle, just so they can kind of play with them in their mind like this. So there are the letters of so naive, and we're looking for a seven-letter answer. Now, my first tip would be that it's worth considering the number of vowels you have either um, consciously or subconsciously, it's worth knowing that most syllables in English um, require one vowel, some require two. Um, it's, this is a seven-letter word with four vowels in A-O-I-E, and therefore it could be a four-syllable word. It's likely to be a three-syllable word. It could just be a two-syllable word. Um, you know, that's obviously still a fair range, but likely to be three is interesting because that's quite a lot for a seven-letter word. Um, now, the second tip, and I think possibly the biggest one, is firstly I'm suggesting, and I mean this is just general, that you should let the kind of letters float around in your mind. And this is why after a year or two of using this technique of writing the letters down to, to kind of re to scramble them around, um, it didn't matter so much to me. I could just read so naive in the clue, and suddenly my mind is just thinking of the letters S O N A I V E. But the second, the, the really good tip is um, that the majority of words used in English, and indeed words used in crosswords, end in a fairly restricted set of endings. So they would be endings like A-T-I-N-G is a very common one, obviously, um, E-R or E-D. Um, there, there are quite a limited set of these endings. So if I was looking at these seven letters, and for some reason I can't tell what the definition is this time, and there are advanced crosswords where you don't really know what you're defining when you're looking at an anagram. But here, for some reason, I can't even guess the part of speech. Um, but those seven letters really only give me two endings that I'm thinking are likely. Obviously, the S could mean a plural, but ignoring that, 
I'm thinking this has to end either in IVE or ION, because those are common endings. Um, it might not, but that's likely. And in this case, you might be able to come up with it. If I tell you that the definition for the clue is subterfuge, um, then that might eventually guide your mind. And um, it's just about letting, you know, there's a combination of letting your mind drift, but guiding it towards what you know about the clue. These clues don't happen in isolation. You have some context. Very importantly, you often have letters in the grid. And for the moment in here, I'm ignoring that. And they can guide your mind. If you happen to know this began with an E, it might be a lot easier than without that. So um, feedback in the grid is very important. And uh, the answer to this one is evasion. And the clue was subterfuge. Now, what I've done for the rest of the clues here is to, I've kept the definitions hidden, but we've started by working out what most of the anagram fodder is. Um, and then we're going to have a look at where to get the other letters from or the letters to be added or subtracted. So in 24, we've got dream, because strange is the indicator. And we need two other letters from that clue. 26, minstrel a tune, but that's one too many letters. That's 13, so we need to take one off. Two down necessary is nine instead of the seven we need, so we need to remove two. Hot etchings, we need to include one other letter. And in true nerd, we're one letter short. So we look at those other clues, and um, in 24, now this is possibly the hardest one, sweetheart. I don't think this would be allowed in the Times, but sweetheart can mean the heart of the word sweet, and that's the letter E. That's the central letter there. Large, more obviously, can be L. So those are the two letters to add there. Um, wandering minstrel with a tune, mostly. Mostly means not all the letters of tune, so you can take the last one off. In two down, it's fairly neatly organized as the anagram indicator. But what is organized is necessary, not as. So we can remove the letters AS. Um, the beginner in 10 down, this is a bit of crossword ease, is L, like a learner driver. And in 15 down, we need one extra letter, and the word we've got to indicate that is article. At C is the fairly neat anagram indicator there. So we're adding an A. So now these are the letters that we have to play with. And I suggest if you haven't got any of these, or, or if you haven't got all of them, pause the video at this point, use whatever technique you like to let these letters drift around, think about the points about um, the number of syllables that you'll require, and, and especially think about endings. There's one of the letters, one of the words contains a Y, and that is very often gonna be at the end of that word. And uh, pause the video if you want for a second and, and have a think about these. And I'll, I'll be next revealing um, something more about them. We'll give you, here we are, the definitions. So we have a gem at 24, a musical piece at 26, outlook in inverted commas at two down, bedroom gear at 10 down, and disparage at 15 down. So only that last one is a verb. Um, and next, because they may still not be easy to you, I'm going to give you the checking letters that you could have got from the rest of the puzzle. And again, this is the sort of thing that really should be able to guide your mind a lot better. I think particularly in 10 down, it's... Um, really giving you some very useful clues if you can get some of these letters and 15. Again, if, if you knew that 24 or 15 began with a vowel, E in the first case, U in the second, those answers have got a lot easier, even if that was the only checking letter you got. And so finally, we'll move to the answers for these and uh, appreciate the clues. So 24, there was a gem and with dream, E and L, it was emerald. 26, very neatly worded clue because both minstrel and tune are kind of relevant to musical pieces. The answer is instrumental. Slight help for the solver there in that, that beginning bit of instrumental, I-N-S-T-R, was in order in minstrel. 
two down outlook slightly strange definition for scenery but i think it's in inverted commas because that's what you look out on it's not literally an outlook and 10 down night clothes now this was the one only three vowels in all of that um, and that in fact in this case was only a two syllable 12 letter word which is very unusual so you really had to find ways to fit those together and this was the one where there was no easy ending like clothes does not end in a normal um, English sort of noun or verb form of ending so often a really tricky compiler will make sure that any anagram clue he gives you is a word that doesn't have a normal ending but that's quite unusual so that in some ways was the hardest I think um, but there again the definition is not that I mean, bedroom gear, it's a little cryptic, but it's not, it's not really pointing you the wrong way at all. And 15 down was underrate, which uh, is a synonym for disparage. As I say, the only verb, although that does end in a fairly common ending, A-T-E, because it's part of rate, it's more a compound word, it's not necessarily um, ending in the same way that adjectives ending A-T-E would. But on the other hand... It is one of the common endings and you, you kind of get lucky sometimes too. So that's my tips on anagram solving. I hope that's been useful. And uh, I hope to see you again on Cracking the Cryptic. Thanks very much for being with us.